Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to share my top tips and tricks with you on how to speed up your workflow in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's open Premiere and let's jump into it. So as you can see, I do have a new project open here and I already imported all my footage, but this is where I really wanna start and show you guys how to speed up your process. So as you can see here, all this footage here, I know is shot with my Sony A7R. So I wanna put it all in its own folder. So if I come down here and I can select all these MP4s here, I can right click and I can go to new bin from selection. And here I could just name these A7 B-roll. Because I know they're all shots that came from my A7S. Another way to do this is you can press Command B, which will create a new bin. And let's throw all my GoPro footage in here. So let's just call this GoPro B-roll. And now I know all these shots here are taken with my GoPro. So I can just grab these files here and I can throw them right inside my GoPro bin. So there are a couple different ways that you can do this, but the key to editing fast is to be organized. If you see here, I do have my A roll. My A roll, this is the file that I want to be on the bottom of my timeline. This is the file of me talking and I'm going to put my B roll over top of it. So I already made a selection which by using the in and out buttons. Hey, what's up guys? I'm on my first cruise ever and I am on the Carnival Beast. And I know I want to end it. Anyways, let's get into it. Right there. So an easy way to create a sequence and to have all the same settings as your footage already is you can just drag this over to here and it's going to create a new sequence and it is going to call it a roll, which is perfect. And again, if you want to change this, so if I want to change it to build, it's as easy as clicking on that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is show you how to color coordinate this footage because I want to make sure I, on my timeline, all my E7 footage is exactly the same color and all my GoPro footage is the same color so I can really tell them apart. So if I go and select all my A7R footage, I can right click and I can go label and let's just say I want to make this forest. So now anytime I bring in a shot here, I know it is going to be green forest color. If you're organized, you're going to be faster and you're going to know where your footage is to be able to grab it and put it on the timeline when needed. The next thing I want to show you is an easy way on how to bring your B-roll and put it right on top of your A-roll in the same timeline without individually clicking on every single file you have. So if I click on my A7 B-roll here, and if I just drag this first file here to there, it's going to create a new sequence. Let's name this B-roll A7R. Perfect. And now if I grab all these other clips here, I'm going to drag this onto the same timeline. This way all my B-roll shots are on the same exact timeline and I can easily scrub through and go through my shots as fast as I can to find the shot that I want instead of clicking on individual shots and looking at them that way. Now to take this a step farther, I'm going to show you the ultimate hack on layering your B-roll. So if I stack these timelines, so if I take my build and I drag it down here, now my timelines are stacked. So now it's as easy as me going through my footage up above, zooming in, pressing the plus key, and I could grab this, I could watch it, I can cut it there, and I know that's a shot that I want. I can cut it there, and now I could just drag and drop this on top of my A roll. So now it's easily cutting. This is the way I prefer to go through my B-roll. I think this makes it much easier because I can quickly go through and find the shot that I am looking for that I want to layer on top of my A-roll. So for instance, again, if I want this shot here, I could just cut it there. Cut it there and now I can just grab it and put it right next to this shot and now you can see it's very easy for me to grab these two B-roll shots and put them together as shown on my timeline. And I am still saying super organized, like I know this is from my A7R4 because it's labeled green. The next shortcut I'm going to show you is going to be how to simply color grade and apply it to all the files below. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer here. So we'll come down here, right click, new item adjustment layer, and it is automatically gonna make it the size of my timeline that I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag it and drop it over all my B-roll clips. 
So I have these four clips where I selected out here. So if I play them, you can see they are in Sony's log profile right now, but they were all shot around the same time of day. So, you know, they're all the same color temperature and I know I'm gonna put the same grade on all of them. So if I grab my adjustment layer here and I go to creative, look, browse, S log LUT to 709. And I'm gonna apply it to this adjustment layer because it is gonna affect all the layers below it. So I can adjust it here. I can apply the intensity that looks good right about there. Maybe I'll bring up the exposure a hair, bring down the contrast, uh, still make it a little bit flat. But now you can see it is on top of all the different clips that I layered here. This is just a fast and easy way to apply one LUT to a bunch of different clips below instead of going through and doing it individually. This honestly saves me a lot of time in post. As you can see, all these shots look great now. Okay, the next thing I want to show you guys has to deal with music. Have you ever made a one minute edit and the song you bring in is three minutes and now you're going in cutting and trying to figure out the best way to compile it? Adobe actually has a built-in remixer which will put it to any length you want. Okay, so now I do have a couple songs in my timeline. So if I double click this, we can see it is roughly two minutes and 28 seconds and my video right now is only 30 seconds long. So I do need this a lot shorter. So if I just drag this file here, let me close this so you see it a little bit better, and I click on the music file, and then I go over here to Essential Sounds, and I tell Adobe Premiere that this is a music file. I click on music, and now I can go down here and see where it says duration. I can click there and then go to remix. This is going to go through the song and figure out where the best cuts are to make this seem seamless and doesn't seem like you have any cuts in it at all. So now I can go in here and I can change this to 30 seconds and it is going to analyze this does take a little bit of time but the payout is definitely worth the wait you can see my clip is exactly 30 seconds long and this is phenomenal it saves you a ton of time from going in and cutting up the music to really try to figure out on your own what may work best adobe is going to do it for you Okay, now we're gonna get into some of my favorite shortcuts. You can go in and customize as many shortcuts as you would like. However, I'm gonna talk you through the shortcuts which I use on a daily basis to save me a lot of time. The first shortcut I'm gonna show you is Command K and this is gonna to be to cut all your footage. So if I open back up my B-roll here and now say I really want this clip, but I wanted to start there. So instead of coming in and using the cut tool here, and making a cut there and then coming over and making a cut there. It is much faster and easier just to press Command K. So if I highlight the clip and I press Command K, it's gonna do a cut automatic for me. Cut it there and then I come over here and press delete, delete, and then I can click here and then delete there and it's gonna close the gap for me. The next shortcut, speaking of closing gaps, I will show you how to close gaps on a timeline. What you can do is you can highlight the footage that you want the gap to be closed and press Command Y, and it's gonna automatically close all the gaps on your timeline. Another really cool one is if you come over here and you decide that I'm watching this, and I don't really like this clip anymore, but I do want to save it for later in case I want to use it someplace else. You can come in and hold this and press Shift Command E and it will enable it for now. So it's just going to turn the clip on and off. And if you decide later you want to come back and use it, you can easily go back, toggle it back on. Another shortcut I do want to show you guys today is if you click on here and then you press the toggle button, it will make any window that you are in full screen. So if you're working on a smaller laptop or a smaller screen, this is a great way to really see how you're working and see what you're working with. And if you press command toggle, it is going to go full screen on your timeline. And the last shortcut I'm going to show you today is how to quickly export your video file into the video so it's ready to upload at your need. So instead of coming in here and going to file, export media, and then waiting for it to load. What you can do is I can go back to the edit and then I can just press Command M and it's gonna automatically bring up the export settings. This is normally set at like 75 or 80. You don't need that for a YouTube upload or internet upload. So I normally come in and set it to 30 megabytes per second. I find that to be a good sweet spot between size and quality. 
and then simply just export your video. Perfect. Well, I really hope you learned something in my tutorial. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.